Hiya, my name is Hinny and I am back with another video. This one is Pluto through the houses and I want to thank Ga himself, Ga, for this request that was made quite a few months ago but finally I am getting round to it so I hope you enjoy this video and I am going to go through all 12 houses in this video so do look at the timestamps below if you want to just skip straight to your particular house placement and I also want you to grab a drink if you're staying for the whole ride. I also just want to say if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do if you like what I do it will really help, it helps all the algorithms and all that jazz and give it a thumbs up. You can follow me on my social media Queer Hinny on Instagram Queer Hini, I have a new Facebook page, so go to Queer Hini at Facebook. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter at Hinilicious, so licious as in delicious, Hinilicious. <laughs> and if you're interested in getting a reading, especially if you want to talk more about your Pluto more in depth than we're going to go today, then you can go on over to hinnyhigh.com and you can look at my services and you can also check out my testimonials so you can see what other people have said. Finally, I have set up a Patreon recently. I don't have any hinsters yet, but if you want to be the first hinster to support me on Patreon, you can check out all the social media is below in the description and see what the Patreon is all about. I am going to provide a trigger warning because in this particular video I do make some references to trauma and sexual trauma and death and some other Platonian themes that might trigger some people and also I'm not really going to pull punches at certain points in this video so please keep that in mind as well. That's also a sort of Platonian energy that I want you to get familiar with if you're not already. Pluto itself, first of all, as a planet or as an archetype. So Pluto is the slowest moving planet of the ones that we typically use in astrology and in your birth chart. It's a generational planet actually. And depending on which sign Pluto is in, it could be even longer in that sign or it could take a shorter time in that sign and actually because this is because Pluto has a sort of I think cylindrical orbit and in Scorpio actually which Pluto is said to rule secondarily it moves faster so it moves faster through the sign of Scorpio compared to the other signs and then we have the debate regarding Pluto as to whether or not it's a planet so you can see that Pluto Plutonian archetypes and energies are all about contestation, polarization. Pluto is also the furthest planet from the sun and so Pluto is very often associated with wanting to kill our ego so that's a big part of our Plutonian power to, I don't want to say kill the ego but to really tame the ego. Pluto is quite often associated with Hades or even equated to Hades but really that's just one of the many archetypes that you can find throughout the world, throughout different cultures and lore that um, is just like another archetype of Pluto. And so yes, we do get associations of trials, giving trials to people so that they uh, can enter the underworld for whatever reason and so that they can get back out, back out of the underworld as well or the other place because Pluto deals with underworlds or other worlds or the other side or the unseen side of things. And Pluto is also about cores, it's so like the core of an apple or a nuclear core. So the, 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 the really powerful center or heart or kernel of something. And of course Pluto is actually about the heart. I do believe on the actual planet Pluto there's a heart shaped lake that's like made of poison or something or ice or both and um, so that's <laughs> quite plutonian right just in the sense of like really 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 going deep and going to face all of the sort of harder to face emotions shall we say of the heart or matters of the heart that are not always the sort of leonite or cancerian heart matters that are very bombastic or very like loving or very like reciprocal and very sort of homey and cozy and fun and fiery no, it's really, really, really going deep and into the very, very, very darkest recesses of the heart. All the sadnesses and the traumas of the heart. That's Pluto. 
heart. <laughs> and I wanted to show you a couple tarot cards as well. And the first one, this is by the way, is from a, a mini version of the Rider Waite tarot. I actually carry this with me on my person almost every day. I really love it. I have Mars and Gemini, so I love anything I can like really get handy with. Here we have the death card. Archetypes of death often are associated with Pluto. And so you get matters of purging or killing or dying. And it doesn't have to be about people, it could be about all other things dying or ending or being purged. And did you know that Pluto also deals with what I call peekaboo trials? Part of Pluto's function in our natal chart, I think, is to give us tests about control and manipulation, our deepest, deepest, furthest shadow sides. And what Pluto does is if we've overcome a particular trial in our life, let's say we got over a really manipulative ex or we got out of a really toxic relationship or friendship or just awful sort of bond. Okay, that's great. We got out of it, right? We overcame it. But Pluto has this thing it does, especially if you're having like major transits that involve Pluto, where Pluto reintroduces the same sort of theme, the same traumatic theme. However, it's not like other, like if Pluto's going retrograde, for example, this can happen, but it's not like other retrogrades where it's almost exactly the same thing happening. Pluto wants to see if you've really developed the ability to detect that same energy, but in a different form. And so watch out for that because Pluto's gonna give you that same toxic boyfriend energy, but it's not gonna look like it did last time, like that ex-boyfriend. It's gonna look like something or someone very different, but the same, just to see if you really pass that trial. And when I was looking through the little tarot deck this morning, I was just gonna show you the death card, but then I saw the six of swords and I was like, yeah, I have to show you this one and I have to include this one in the video. You know, in many stories about going into hell, for example, there is this figure of transportation or a certain messenger or a certain guardian who helps you get in or stops you from getting in um, or lets you in or takes you there even. But it's a six of swords and swords is to do with your mind. Basically, Pluto takes you to your deepest trauma, to your deepest psyche and your deepest fears. And this can be personal trauma or ancestral trauma or past life trauma as well. Pluto is only going to take you there if you are ready to go there. Pluto might destroy and put you through cycles of manipulation over and over again when you're not ready <laughs> to deal with it. It'll just keep repeating or it'll be constant and chronic. But if you're ready, if you put the swords um, sort of down, six of swords energy here, if you get mature, the six is about maturity, in your head, if you're mentally ready to go into the, the psychologist, psychologist's room and have the conversation about that trauma or face that phobia of yours, that's really the good power of Pluto. Pluto's gonna take you across the waters that you thought were like turbulent or scary or whatever, but actually with this with this calm and ready mind, Pluto's gonna help you conquer these waters. And once you've crossed that channel into Pluto's realm, and once you've come back, you'll be a whole different person or you'll be at a whole different level. And that is the beauty of our Plutonian energy. So let's talk a little bit now about the houses, just generally, in case you didn't know what the houses are in your chart. So houses, just imagine basically that the sky has been cut up into 12 cake pieces or slices and each house or each slice has its own set of themes and energies and a particular house acts as a sort of building if you like that has its own set of rules it's the sign and the planet or planets or other bodies that are within that house that are actually all dictated by the house and then we're kind of going down so the sign is gonna be like the decor, the interior design, or the flavor, the aroma in that house. And the planet is kind of like the tenant or like a passing visitor of that house. Alrighty, so let's take a look at having Pluto in the first house. This is also Pluto rising or Pluto ascendant. So if you have Pluto in the first house, you're probably going to have a very intense look. Your aura as well may come across somehow intense and it's probably going to be in the eyes. You could also have a very kind of 
unstoppable world view. Your body might be scarred or your skin might suffer for quite a long period in your life if your Pluto is out of control. Pluto rising people have this polarizing potential. Again, it's polarizing energy. So you could have this potential to be very spiteful as an individual, but also a very loyal person as an individual. You might have this strong sexual magnetism. And finally, if you are a Sagittarius rising, especially, you can check out a video I already made about a year ago for Sagittarius rising with Pluto in the first house or Pluto rising. Um, it's actually my most viewed, most commented, most liked video. Um, so you definitely enjoyed that one. Go check it out if you're Sagittarius rising. Pluto in the second house. So Pluto here makes someone intensely resourceful. A lot of money, probably. This person probably has very powerful talents, but they might be latent. And you're probably gonna be someone who like spends a lot of money or who really barely spends their money at all. So you could be super intensely stingy. Powerful, but also very testing opportunities tend to come your way. Your personal possessions and materials might have something to do with like cleansing or transforming somehow or purging, you know, detoxing somehow. Pluto in the third house. So you might have with this placement very powerful siblings, very powerful cousins, and or very powerful people just in your immediate localities. You could have a very unforgiving way of relating. You could be mentally stimulated by or really interested in things like death, birth, the other world. You move and exist in your local spaces, in your surroundings, with power. You could easily pull in or mystify those around you. Pluto in the fourth house. You feel deeply rooted in spaces of purity, cleansing, or like intense energy. Your past might have been very traumatic somehow. You're quite comfortable and most at ease when people are deadly true with you. Facing scary challenges or situations might actually be when you are most in your element. You could be someone who's very private about their own trauma and their past. Alrighty, Pluto in the fifth house. So you're probably gonna be intensely sexual or very into sex somehow. You could obsess when you're having fun or pleasing yourself or when you are playing games. When you're exploring your shadow side and the shadow side of others, you actually probably find it quite rewarding and it's quite refreshing and regenerative for you. You could be very intensely passionate about rejuvenating yourself and others, especially this might involve really getting yourself out of oppressive situations and spaces. So you really prize that with a passion. There may have been some sexual trauma with this placement. Pluto in the fifth house people are intensely <laughs> unique and some of them can be sort of ruthlessly authentic because the fifth house does deal with your personal authenticity and there can be this side of you, this Plutonian side of you where you really don't care. It's very polarizing the way in which you express yourself. You can also be a very authentically integral person. So someone who's very big, uh, intensely big on integrity and truth. Pluto in the sixth house. Okay, so this one is someone who is going to have like intense routines and regime. Your health may in some way be deeply challenged. The work and the jobs that you do might really be related to things like death, birth, sex, could even be sex work, displacement. It could have to do with control, with psychotherapy, with psychology. It could be someone who's very powerful at work. Powerful boss, powerful employee. You also have this tendency to take on tasks that are very intense and that are very challenging or even that are very scary. Pluto in the sixth house might mean that you're actually isolated at work or that you're doing your work in isolation somehow. Pluto in the seventh house already. So your partner, whether it's your current committed partner or past committed partner's future, <laughs> right? They're gonna be, they are, they were, 
controlling, plutonian, powerful people, you know, brutally honest as well. They are very resourceful and they're very sexy. The seventh house does deal with open enemies and open oppositions or easy obstacles. And when I say easy obstacles, I mean things that you will easily consider to be an opposition. And so all of these things are very powerful. So you might have powerful open enemies, basically. It could be someone who plays mind games with other people, so watch out because the seventh house does deal with projection, okay, when we deal with the other. And you could be someone who thinks that that's what other people do to you and you never do it to them. But actually, the seventh house has our descendant or our second rising sign there. So actually, people do see our descendant as well. They see this seventh house projection stuff going on. So watch out that you're not actually the one projecting. In general though, your relationships with other people are likely to be deeply passionate and quite intense, probably. Some of you will find negotiating with others, especially if it's like an enemy or someone you just don't like, but you have to get on with, you find all of that a real challenge. There could be a lot of like intense uh, feeling, like bitterness maybe, or spite, or even vengeful feelings. Could be a lot of that there that makes like a negotiation and peace and agreeing to disagree just so difficult for you. With Pluto in the eighth house then, you quite likely have lots of control over other people's resources, other people's shares, that can be their money, that could be like control over contracts or really intense connection with contracts intensely making contracts with other people. This also, by the way, includes your partner. The seventh and the eighth house go hand in hand when we think about committed partners and the other. And so this is gonna be your partner's stuff, your partner's money. There's an intense bond here and you might even be in control of that. If your Pluto is out of control and you can get a reading with me, book a reading with me if you wanna know how to handle planets that might be out of control for you, I can help you with that magic control. Anyway, if your Pluto is out of control and you have it in the eighth house, then you might have a lot of debt, basically. A lot of things you have to pay back, whether that's money um, or things that you just owe people otherwise in some contractual sense, but it, tend, it might tend to be money for you and it's very chronic the more you ignore your Pluto. With this placement you might have to do a lot of deep diving when it comes to your own psychology, your fears and your sort of insecurities. If you have this placement you might really benefit greatly compared to others from just going to see a therapist or talking with someone openly and honestly and deeply about things that you're afraid of or your insecurities or anything that again is in the deep recesses of your heart that you have thus far found it very hard to reveal to others because it's that process of revelation that is kind of like going across the water and your mind is gonna become so much more mature the way you think about it the way you process it mentally is going to become much more mature and you're probably going to get over fears conquer fears and transform out of insecurity People with this placement have a lot of secrets, a lot. Quite likely you get involved in other people's secrets. And that can mean a million things, right? But it's secrets. So you could just end up knowing <laughs> whether you intended to or not, but knowing other people's secrets. Pluto in the ninth house. So this is gonna give an intense teacher somehow. There's something intense about you. And you don't have to be a literal teacher, but there's something teachery or preachy about you and it's intense. Be careful with this placement because you could be a nihilist. I mean nihilism could be good, like you could be like a philosophical nihilist, but you could just become too nihilistic. You could have a lot of big life lessons that involve these Platonian themes of sex, birth and death and also secrets, so big life lessons that have something to do with secrets for you. You could be someone who asks very intense and um, probing and powerful questions. Pluto in the ninth house, you quite likely have all these sort of big and bold dreams inside you to uh, change, you know, dreams, big dreams to change and also big dreams to master or take control of something. Also, I think some people with this placement could be a xenophile, so someone who just loves anything, anyone, like foreign or other, or abroad somehow. And also with this placement, you could get someone who's very intensely religious or zealous about their religion or their uh, just general beliefs in things. Pluto in the 10th house then. So your secrets quite likely are 
they've been made public, they are public, or they're gonna be made public. Especially if a planet comes knocking on the door to transit your 10th house and conjuncts Pluto. Yes, secrets, your secrets coming out. You're probably someone who is known to be polarizing or known to be sexy or known to be powerful or known to be resourceful. Your career path and your like CV or resume might come to involve a lot of things and reflect a lot of your experience with Platonian things. So sex, death and um, transformation and coming in and changing things powerfully, intensely, or even things like healing that could be something that shows up on your CV or when someone looks at your career path and your legacy even. With this placement, you might manipulate your reputation and or you might become a sort of victim of other people manipulating how you are portrayed in public. So be careful about that. Pluto in the 10th house, you might also obsess about how you are portrayed. You might obsess over your images on social media. You might obsess over a fear of missing out as well. So be very careful about that. You might be the kind of person who spends a lot of time looking at other people's profiles. Pluto in the 11th house. This is gonna give someone who has super duper loyal friends. You're probably gonna be the very intense, powerful, sexy or resourceful one of the group and that's also how you're seen. It could be the type of friend that you're seen as. Your wishes are probably gonna be very deeply private and they might also be very like intense sort of wishes. So make sure you take the opportunity to share your wishes with other people that you trust, your friends, your allies, and you'll find that you'll be able to actually attain more of your wishes through this sharing and through this kind of spiritual collaboration. With this placement, there could be a lot of death and secrets and even trauma in groups that you are a member of. You might be someone who also obsesses over networking or socializing and having Pluto in the 11th house makes you, you know, if you're on a team or in a group or in a group chat or whatever, any 11th house thing, it can make you this Marmite type of person who people either love or they hate. This is polarizing Pluto again, remember. Finally then we have Pluto in the 12th house. This gives you powerful hidden enemies. So I want you especially to pay attention to when you're meditating or when you're dreaming or when you're in any kind of your calm sort of sleep type space or dreamscape. Whenever you're in those zones, pay attention to the messages you get because that will reveal these hidden enemies. Be careful as well because with the 12th house Pluto placement, your obsessions, anything or anyone that you obsess over, even yourself, narcissism could be here, intense narcissism, could actually become your undoing. So it can trip you over, it could even become your incarceration in some cases, your imprisonment in some cases. So please take care with anything, any kind of obsessive energy. With this placement, your spirit, which is your like deepest and purest self, your most authentic self. It is so like full of untapped power and potential. So try to learn more about your 12th house and tapping into your sleep and your dreams to, to get more of an understanding of your Pluto and that power. People with this placement might have a lot, it's quite likely that you have a lot of nightmares and or intense dreams or you have sleep paralysis maybe or you are sort of spiritually attacked a lot of the time and with this placement you really might sort of suppress your power and you do this by serving other people but serving other people who just want to use and or abuse you and so be very careful of this and this sort of suppression or hiding of your own power and your own control at other times you might actually be covering up your power by just doing mundane things and focusing on mundane tasks and the mundane world. And so all of your transformational power is neglected. So if you're suffering from these more like negative 12th house energies and you have Pluto here, I really recommend you focus on your sleep, on good sleep and making positive affirmations before you sleep and intentions before you sleep. If you want to communicate with your spirit guides in your sleep, then to, to make sure you bring in or intend only for good spirit guides and you intend only for your guides. And also I encourage you to get yourself involved in any form of meditation. A meditation doesn't have to be going to a fancy temple and paying 100 pounds to sit and, and do yoga. No, it can be any 
thing that is really spiritually calming and grounding for you um, and probably in some form of isolation. It could be a walk, it could be getting in touch with nature, it could be music, it could be through the arts, whatever. Find what it is for you and do more of it and do dream interpretation work, do um, work that is designed to fight spiritual attacks. Okay, so the affirmations again and telling yourself that you are protected, you are guided and be careful of telling yourself Mm, psychologically damaging things as well because Pluto can do this when Pluto's out of control and if you would still like to work more with your Pluto in the 12th house you can of course book a reading with me we can look more closely at your Pluto and see what we can do about your 12th house energies if you are affected by these more um, shadow side type things so that was the Pluto through the houses video I do hope you enjoyed it please leave a comment below I really 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 want you to tell me what your Pluto placement is um, which house you can even tell me the sign and um, but which house it's in and how much you resonated with this video and how you um, also work with your Plutonian magic I'll see you in the next video take care and have a lovely hump day